So now we're going to go down to the verse vocals. And I'm going to skip down to the bottom of the track and I'm going to show you why I have them in this location. So when I originally did this mix, I believe that the verse vocals, because there was three or four different singers, I believe that the verse vocals were spread out probably on seven or eight channels of the tape. Again, this was an analog mix and I wanted to make a commitment on these parts so that it was heard the same every time. So I was doing, I remember very specifically that I was doing console saturation, i.e. overdriving the line input of the console, which you can do with the SSL plugin. Again, I got the sound that I wanted and I committed it. So I actually printed these to tape. And then again, I, on this mix, I've actually put some extra spank on it. So we go to the verse vocals. What I've added to these tracks is the Slate Verb Suite Classic with the CLA snare drum sound, which is actually just an emulation of the Sony DRE 2000, or as they call it, the FG 2000. It's because it's freaking good. And they're freaking good. Hey, how you doing? I'm Tom Luraji, how you doing? Okay? And again, so remember, I've comped these tracks already, you know, when I did the original mix, and you'll hear why. Okay, so you're going to hear distortion, saturation, panning, and the whole enchilada. Storm to the party like my name was El Nino. When well, I'm hanging out, drinking in the back of an El Camino. As a kid. Was a skid. And no one knew me by name. Trashed my own house party because nobody came. If I go to the second verse. Because you don't know a single. Again, this part of the song and this verse, when I mixed it, you know, Derek and I spent a lot of time on this. So we committed it, and it's been committed that way for 18 years. So sometimes when something is perfect, you just commit it and leave it. So, and then the other spot, again, is in the bridge where we're using these vocals. Well, a no good at lower middle class rap. Backpack. And I don't give a shit about nothing. You be standing on the corner talking all that kerfuffin'. But you don't make such a mother gas. You be hot. Cause if the egg don't stay, you'll be ringing off the hook. You're on the head list. So you can hear there's panning, there's distortion. It's, again, it's, it's all there. So, yeah, I know. Here we go. Here you go. I said my mom should have had an abortion. Another trick. Look, I'm mixing analog back then, so I'm running digital delays. The abortion delay and the vocal delay in the chorus, again, hooks hooks in this song. In today's mixing, I could have automated that stuff. But in mixing in 2000, it was, it was a nightmare to, to do that type of automation. Again, I wasn't using Pro Tools back then. I had the abortion delay coming up on a channel on the console. I printed the delay, and as you could hear in the abortion I delay, an abortion. I filtered it. Okay, you hear the sweep? At that particular point in the track, you all know there's also another effect, and it's the flange track. So, since we're right down there, I'm gonna play that part of the song. Let's play the whole bridge, and then you'll hear the flange track come in. Let me solo the flange track so you can hear what it does. That's right. It doesn't do anything. It, that's funny, isn't it? It's weird how that works. So let me show you. This is old school analog tape flanging, okay? Back in the day, I mixed a half inch tape. So how do we create a flange track? Well. The first thing is, in order to get the audio to flange, it has to be the same audio, okay? And then you have to modulate a delay back and forth, 
okay, to get it to sweep. So, and it, and it has to be very close to the original, usually it's within a couple of milliseconds. But how do you get a really killer flange track that almost sounds like it goes before, it's, that it's almost pre-delay and then post-delay? What I did is I printed the half-inch analog tape, uh, literally a piece of the mix, and all the instruments that I wanted the flange. Even though I'm only using the flange over here, okay, I needed to start way back here. Why? Oh, yes, well, I'll tell you why. Thank you for asking. Because I'm going to fly this half-inch tape back into the multi-track, and I need to very speed it back and forth ever so slightly to get that flange sound. So the reason why I have this much pre-roll on it, you're gonna hear. So I'm gonna play the, the mix with the flange track on, and what you're going to hear is what sounds like something out of tune. And what that actually is, it's me. I'm running the analog half inch, and I'm very speeding it. And what I'm doing is I'm trying to get it in time, okay? And then once I get it in time, then I'm trying to find where the sweep is, and then control the sweep. And that takes some time. So it obviously took me 32 bars, roughly. Um, but here you go, here's what it sounds like. So, and I'll talk you through it. Okay, so now I'm trying to catch up. Okay, it's out of tune. Okay, now, there's the flange. Now you're gonna hear the flange and going back and forth. Okay, so I'm very, slowing it down. All right, I'm speeding it up. So now I'm catching the, the sweep. You hear the sweep? Okay, you hear the sweep? That's me slowing and speeding down the tape. And I'm getting control of, the, of where the sweep is. So when it hits the spot that I want, it's, I, it sweeps exactly the way I want it. And here comes the spot. It's gonna be perfect. And here comes the flange. Top of the flange. Okay, so again, here's that flange area. And here comes the flange, where I used it. Top of the flange and a jet engine. Okay, now, that's how you create it, but I don't need all that. So all I do is use the region that I need. And that's what I did. And when I mixed it, I would have just brought the faders up for the point which I needed it. Now, how do you do that with a modern mix? I don't have a half inch machine. Look, I'm gonna show you these tricks so that you can make them your own, okay? So I'm gonna use a specific plugin and then you're either gonna buy that plugin <laughs> or you're gonna figure it out what works best for you. But half of it is just having the knowledge and knowing that you can do it, okay? So for this example, I'm actually gonna use the original instrumental mix, okay? And I'm gonna bring it out some outputs, okay? And I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it live right here on the spot, mix with the masters, La Fabrique, how you doing? So first things first, let's check this. It might sound ugly, but it's gonna sound ugly. I'm probably to put a gain plug in first because I think I'm gonna need to gain this channel down. Okay, and then let me just set it up, okay? Because remember, I'm mixing over here. Hey, I'm mixing over here. All right, so the plugin that I use is the Eventide Precision Time Align. And I'm gonna tell you why I use the Eventide Precision Time Align. Because it allows you to either go before or after. So you can delay or reverse delay, you see? Because when you put it in, it adds delay compensation and allows you to move before the delay compensation. So let's put it to zero and let's hear what it does. You hear the flange? So what does it allow you to do? It allows to actually delay and then go in the opposite direction. So here we go. So I'm playing the instrumental and the mix together. The original instrumental. Check it out. So 
sounds exactly like tape flanching, doesn't it? Okay? Dude, you can all do this, and then you just automate what I'm doing right here. You just automate the, the movement. Okay? There you go. So, tape flange in DAW, solved.